Welcome ladies and gentlemen to game number 3 between Duckodraw and the Maga and it's going to be on Blistering Sands. 1-1 one, one, ladies and gentlemen, 1-1. One, one. Duckodraw takes it back with what? 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 Let me, he let me hear you. With, with what did he actually manage to take back a win? Oh yeah, Mass Stalker, couple of sentries and Colossus. Is that a good combination? Yes it is. I cannot uh, underline enough how good that combination can actually be. So now we're actually going to be on Blistering Sands, which is, you know, the um, the plateau of the game, of the series and the game, because let's face it, the last games of StarCraft have mostly been on Shakura's Plateau, Blistering Sands, uh, no, I mean, just Shakura's Plateau, Lost Temple, Metalopolis. These maps have been in a, rot a rotation of uh, good games to the point of which they've gotten a little bit boring. We haven't seen a Blistering ga uh, Sands game in a while, and we're going to have one now. And this is where we actually separate the men from the boys. Let's face it, both these players are extremely good. But then again, you think about StarCraft 2 and you think about how many good players are there. I mean, there are literally hundreds of Diamond League out there, uh, Diamond Leagues out there. So basically thousands of high Diamond League players. And about thousands of even Master League players. Not that many of them, but there still are. What makes them different from the very, very small number of professional StarCraft 2 players? The answer of that is series. When you're playing ladder, you can basically go one build. And that's it. All you have to do is be the epiphany of perfection in one build. As you can see right now, standard, uh, normal build, spawning pool, gateway, nothing really to talk about. You can see the production tab, so I won't really want to get this out there. Uh, when you're playing ladder, you can only play one, you can just play one build, and you will always face different opponents. So that build will have n always the same amount of effectiveness because nobody you you might lose but if you're really good at what you do at that specific at that specific build you will always uh, guarantee a high win ratio in series however you can't do that when you're playing someone in a best of three five seven matches you can't rely on the same build you great sure you have this perfect your best build ever and you do it the first game and you win what do you do the second game? Because your opponent is going to uh, counter it. You is going to counter your so-called perfect build because he knows it. He knows what you're going to do. So series uh, series of games is simply the greatest way of uh, of determining the best players from the really good ones. Uh, here we have a pylon, proxy pylon, gonna cancel it, gonna go down, there we go. Nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary, except this is what I'm talking about. What is this? Two gate, two gates off the bat. Two gates off the bat for um, white raw. Three gates gonna go down. So, and there's a fourth gate, so four gates. So, duck load raw, white raw is opting to go for four gate pressure now. Diversifying his build. So far, he's only gotten one, gone one build, uh, and that worked for him once, didn't work for him, uh, actually didn't work the first time, worked for him the second time, but now he knows that he can't do the same thing. So he's diversifying, and, he's, uh, and this is what it means to be a good player. Blocking off the ramp with a Zalot and a Stalker right there. Nothing as of yet for the Maga, getting out a second hatchery, so going for a second expansion as well. We'll see what he transitions into. But right now, whatever he transitions into, into, he is going to face a the White Rob on the warpath. Because this, uh, these are five gates, uh, four gates. And these four gates are going to apply a lot of pressure. Very nice, actually walling himself in there just to make sure that there's no run by by any zerglings because uh, White Rod doesn't exactly, I don't think he knows that Demaga went for an expansion. Oh, yeah, but yes he does, yes he does. Anyway, now Demaga is, uh, now White Rod is moving out across the map, probe in there as well. Why a probe will probably lay down a proxy pylon. So now the entire game and the series is actually gonna be determined by a new strategy that we haven't seen the first two games. This is what being a StarCraft 2 player, a StarCraft 2 good player is all about, great, exceptional player is all about. 
and Zealots versus Stalkers versus a couple of Roaches and a Queen. Here comes the engagement. There's the Proxy Pylon right here, and it's going to get built. Two Zealots coming in from behind to save the Proxy Pylon from Zergling. Zergling's coming in. Meanwhile, the front Zealots have already died. So we knight, right, let's switch to the unit tab. We have two Zealots and three Stalkers going to fight off against uh, six Roaches and two Queens, or one Queen here, and a couple of Zerg Zerglings, ten Zerglings, warping in more Zealots, warping in more Zealots. The probe, the probe is still alive. The probe should probably be left behind in case the Pylon dies, but the probe is actually doing damage as well. There we go. The probe has actually died. So no longer going to be able to lay down another pylon. However, warp ends are going to come continue. The gateways are still there. And the second their cooldown is up, they are applying early pressure. So right now, it's all about who makes this work. If uh, Demaga manages to survive this, he is on two base, so he will be able to uh, continue producing units. While, however, this build is a all-in build for Duck Roll Draw. Right now, if we look at the economy, same economy for both players, uh, same amount of income. Demaga just a slight harvester advantage just because he's on two base. White Rock continually continues the pressure. However, he is mining himself out at the moment, starving himself out, moving in there. Spinecrawl on the way. Spinecrawler very low health. He could snipe this out. Not doing so. Actually opting to keep the Baroches inside the base. Doing a little bit of damage. Zerglings pop up. Spinecrawler is going to go up. So now Duck Low Draw is a bit behind. This is a very nice unit composition for the manga to counter this. He has Roaches to fight off the Stalkers. Uh, and the Zealots and the Queen's Transfusion is going to help. Also, with the Spinecrawler now up, the attack will not be as effective. The production tab still says that there's another Warping in Zealot, but right now, Udak is, is is behind because he is continuously mining himself out. Harvester count still fairly similar. He's mining one base faster while the Maga is on two. So it's gonna come down to very, very, very tight a uh, tight uh, window of opportunity to see who actually manages to win. Ducklow Draw cannot push in there because of Spinecrawler. Spinecrawler repositioning to make sure that he can get an attack. Uh, an attack. Complete wall in here, so. Uh, why uh, the Maga cannot send Zerglings across the map for anything? What are Ducklow's raw options? He needs to make this work. He needs to inflict massive damage or retreat and expand. It's, uh, so he decides to actually engage. The Spine Crawler is probably the decisive factor in this battle. What will the, uh, the White Rod do? He is in a very bad position right now. He is applying the pressure, but the Maga is in here with a, sh uh, a great amount of. Units, he is mining off of the, this expansion, not the best uh, uh, saturation ever, but he is mining efficiently, his base is fully saturated, still producing units, production tab says there's a second spike crawler on the way, three roaches, so right now, the Ducklow Draw has nothing, his army is here and he is ready to fight, but he is actually behind, if we look at the army size, he is uh, actually behind Demaga quite a lot, so he's actually doing really good, splitting up his army here uh, is a little bit risky, but he's breaking the back door, and he has a sm uh, small amount of army to keep uh, Demaga guessing as to what the Glow Draw will do. It's gonna be come down to the wire. Will Demaga, will White Raw actually uh, plow his way through the back door, or will he, or will? Uh, Demaga be able to counter that. Now the uh, back door has been broken. Let's see what's going on. Duck Lord Raw gonna move in here. There's a. Um, Overload gonna spot this attacking force and there are the Maga's forces moving inside the main to defend it And here comes Duck Low Draw from the attack gonna try and snipe off that pylon This is a very nice position gonna lay down a force field probably yes Separating the army this is huge separating all of the Maga's army is stuck on the ramp And there are a couple of sentries here as you can see slaying down another force field very nice indeed Warping in a lot more units and now the, the Maga is in a very bad position But there are roaches moving out across the map Pro gonna probably get us around on white raw because there they are Roaches and links, and Demag uh, however, it's all come gonna come down to Duck Lord Raw inflicting enough damage, and here comes the damage, doing another uh, force field, still keeping a lot of uh, Demaga's army inside the base, and here comes uh, the uh, reinforcing units for Demaga to try and get us around. If the Spiron falls, that it could be huge, warping in a couple of Zealots. The Zealots do make it, the uh, Stalkers, Stalkers do make it in here, but Pylon is dead, so no more reinforcing units for uh, White Raw. He has taken out the expansion, he needs to make this work, he needs to take out as much of the army as possible, he, uh, laying down another force field. Half of Demaga's army is still stuck inside the base but now white raw is in a very bad position what does production tab say uh, production tab says still more roaches and links on the way and now the duck raw is in uh, is in a bad position he actually has managed to take that ex uh, down that expansion but he doesn't have an army to speak of so he knows that he's gonna be on the defensive for a little bit of for a while 
uh, Hatchery gonna lay down, Hatchery being laid down again for the Maga, still chasing down Stalkers, uh, uh, warping in a couple of Zealots here for the defensive. However, right now, uh, Duck Rosar is in a bad position because the Maga is expanding again, has the upper hand in units count, has the upper hand in an army. So, what uh, Duck Rosar needs to do is hold this off with great power hold it off without losing that many units as you can see the units lost have is fairly similar so he needs to make this work and roach is using the low ground with the zergling vision to actually try and snipe off uh, a pylon not gonna do so so now the mark is backing off white Ron needs to expand fast powerful before he mines himself out as you can see he's almost mined out at the main so it's gonna come down to the wire in uh, in terms of economy and army size, right now the Maga is in a commanding position. Um, White Raw played the Maga there, uh, forcing his, uh, forcing the uh, Maga's army inside the main and uh, uh, putting force fields here. But the Maga, the uh, Maga didn't waste any time. Actually, ran around and surrounded White Raw's army, and now White Raw's gonna taste it, gonna have to taste his own medicine when the Maga breaks down the back door and White Ra is actually going to have to defend two points at the same time which is not a good position for considering his unit composition he only has five stalkers three sentries and five zealots versus 19 roaches just the roach army outweighs entire the entirety of uh, of the Protoss army. More links on the way, um, I suppose. No more roaches on the way. A queen, glial reconstruction, making roaches that much more dangerous. He, uh, White Run needs to expand as soon as possible. I do not see him coming down for. Uh, whoa! This is actually huge. Getting down Burrow. And Burrow is very dangerous at this point because of, uh, because of roaches. Roaches, as you know, regenerate really, really fast when they're underground. As you can see, rapid regeneration. Uh, regenerates extreme life when they get burrowed so this roach army will be very dangerous when that once that happens white raw moving out to securing his expansion however there is no robotics facility on the way so there is no detection for duck load raw at the moment white raw is very in a very dangerous position if that uh, if he doesn't get an observer out in time before this mass roach army gets inside his main and it will he is done so Units lost tab favoring the Maga by a slight. That doesn't show the game. That doesn't show how the game went. What shows how the game went is the fact that the uh, White Raw is on no economy. Soon his base, his main will be mined out, and his expansion needs to get up and running. But even so, he is still behind. He hasn't harvested the same amount of minerals or gas as the Maga. Well, minerals. Uh, the Maga hasn't secured his second base gas. Uh, but the Maga is going to get burrowed, and with no vision, the Roaches are just going to be that damn dangerous. Splitting up the army, uh, will the Duckledraw see it? Yes, thanks to the vision of the uh, Zelnaga Tower, Duckledraw has spotted that, has spotted one force down here, one force trying to move for the back door. So, ve uh, two prone attack their uh, attempt for the Maga, and now Duckledraw knows he has to uh, back out. And now he's in again in a very bad position, he knows that this is what he needs to defend, however, this will not, this these defenses, two cannons, will not survive the mass roach army and here comes the engagement of one stalker being sniped off there these two pylons are gonna go down probably no and now the problem is the force fields have actually locked duck low draw out of his own uh, uh, out of chasing the maga and the maga pushes in the back door and is he gonna take out both cannons yes taking out both cannons and both pylons before duck or white rock can uh, get here for the defensive and now that might not seem as a huge economical hit because it really isn't. The problem is the Maga now has an open to, an open do, uh, road right here inside the main of White Raw. So White Raw has nothing to counter this. A two prone attack would be devastating for White Raw at this, at this point. He is still behind in the unit tab. As you can see, 12 stalkers versus 45 roaches. I mean, 45 roaches using force fields very effectively to try and separate the roaches. But there's the burrow and there's the heal. Here, roaches generating their life really fast. So now, Good micro for uh, the Maga sinking in the low, uh, low health roaches and popping them back up. White Raw has no chance. This is GG as far as I'm concerned. The Maga has one, uh, two, uh, two to one in his best of three series. Very nice play. There's the GG. Nothing to be said about that. And. And there, there it is. There's the end of the game. The decisive factor, what really, really mattered in this game, was the Maga's reaction time. When his army was locked inside the main, he didn't uh, panic. He didn't uh, think, "Oh my God! Oh my God! What am I gonna do? My army is my in my main while he is plowing through my expansion, and then I'm gonna uh, not be able to do anything." He didn't panic. He realized that there's no way uh, White Ross gonna run out of energy, so he actually 
ran around. Taking out the reinforcing pylon was huge, and Duck Rodra's army was just withered away. Burrow, um, Burrow because Demaga was on two base, allowing him for more minerals, allowing him for more a massive amount of roaches, just plowed through everything Duck Lodra had. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the Best of 3 series, and I'll see you guys next time.